All right, so this is set to pub. No, it was set to public. There we go. It's set to public now. Um, tell me if that link works now. All right, cool. So we are live now. Awesome. Audio, check, check. Check, check. Cool. All right. All right. If it's at all possible, can you ping the um, ping the basis of facial anatomy so I can know people are watching it? Well, hello. Awesome. All right, hello everybody. Welcome to uh, this impromptu stream. This is less of an impromptu stream and actually a panel I'm hosting for RamCon. RamCon is an online convention put on by Spirit Productions and several other passionate individuals who want to put on an online furry convention during this pandemic. Now for this, I'm actually going to be not necessarily streaming, but actually doing a lesson on uh, what I am going to try to kind of reference Hold, let me let me rephrase that. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing is I agreed to do a panel on basically human anatomy and the how to implement it into an anthropomorphic and how to implement it into anthropomorphic characters. Forgive me for being so tired. I am not entirely awake. I got five hours of sleep last night, so it's been it's been it's been a rough day. In any case. I'm going to save this. We're going to delete that. And I'm going to just do a couple of quick warm up sketches just so that when I do basically start streaming this, it's not entirely just me completely guessing out of the blue. Um, hello, everyone. If you are here from RamCon, um, thank you so much. I will not be paying attention to the chat in YouTube. I will be paying attention to the chat in um, the basis of facial and anthropomorphism. So how this is going to work is this panel is going to be in uh, two parts. Basically, the first part is going to be a large, uh, probably 30-minute lesson on how to implement um, the human facial structure into anthropomorphic characters. And then I will open up the floor to questions. So I'm actually going to start that right now. I'm going to set a timer for 30 minutes and we're going to try to get through this lesson pretty quick. I hope you guys all enjoy this panel. It is something that I am actually planning on making it into a video at some point in the future. I have OBS open and recording this right now. So hopefully this will make it into a full length video at some point, which would be really cool because I really, really think this is something that a lot of people need to learn. And I am very excited to kind of learn it. So let's just start off with a couple of warm up sketches just so that we can all get um, nice and loose so that I'm not just frustrated out of my mind. So we're going to start off with a couple of circles. This is a general warm up that I do all the time just to make sure that I'm not um, real jittery or really kind of just tense while I'm drawing. So we're just going to do this real quick. That's enough of that. We're going to go to another layer. We're going to attach some lines. Just make sure that my motor skills are not off and then we are gonna get right into the lesson. All right, so we're gonna get started right into this. Um, human facial anatomy and how to apply it to anthropomorphic characters. So to start off with, we when we look at the furry fandom and anthropomorphic characters in general, we often think of like um, an animal with human characteristics, but we don't actually consider how we create them or how to express them or how we kind of interpret nature so that we can view it in the way that we can express human emotions in them. Now, if we look at something, say like, like a fox, and we look at how a fox or any other animal kind of expresses their emotions, you don't really see it that much. And the reason for that is because animals express emotions and have different just general facial structure than humans do. So something like a, so if we go to something like a dog right here, we actually have a facial structure that is very dissimilar to a human. 
or just not something that we can easily interpret and express. And we can see this in movies such as uh, the live action Lion King, live action Jungle Book, um, where you don't actually have a lot of expression in the animals. And the reason they did this is because they wanted to keep it genuine to what the animals would actually express with their actual anatomy. Now, this is interesting theory, but in practice, it doesn't actually, it's not actually very good because humans rely so much on facial expression to tell what a person is feeling or what something is feeling. Now, the reason that I bring this up is because animals don't have facial anatomy that works to make human expressions. And we also don't have as many references for anatomy of how to make an animal face. So for example, like we have a dog here and it's, this is the actual anatomy for, this is the actual muscle, muscle structure of a dog. Now, the actual muscle structure of a dog doesn't lead itself to make as advanced expressions as we humans can create. We can also say the same thing about, that's the wrong picture. We can also say the same thing about a cat. Cat also has facial structure. It's mostly in the jaw. So it's, it's meant for crushing animals, like small animals, because it's a predator. But in terms of actually being able to make uh, emotional expressions, not very good. And that can be said for a horse as well. Like what part of this um, leads itself to be able to make the exact same type of disgust, um, surprise, and various forms of expression that you would see in say that humans or we can interpret. And then how do we even design something like a dragon? How do we get to design something like this so that we think it like works for us ourselves to interpret? And the truth is on the, and the, and the different, Hold on, let me think of a way to say this. And the basis for how we can tackle this isn't actually in the animal's facial structure. It's actually in a human's. Okay. So one thing that we have is something that a lot of people kind of look up, or at least I look up when I'm trying to find ways to draw certain things. And that is, where, where can I find references for this thing? And in terms of animal facial structure, there really isn't a lot of references and we can't really get it that easily. But when it comes to something else, like humans, there are a ton of references. There's a ton of like different types of facial structure tutorials. There are different types of ways to interpret the human face. And there are just a ton of ways to reference how to draw the human figure. Now, the reason I'm getting to this is basis is on the basis of anthropomorphization. I'm going to spell this. And it comes in the word, and it, and it really does come down to a deeper meaning of the word. Okay, come on, buddy. Anthropomorphic. Why is it not looking up? Having human characteristics. Now, I got something in my throat. <sighs> Hold on. Here we go. I'm a little bit, I can't tell if I have uh, COVID-19 or if I'm just sick from allergies, but in any case, there's a deeper meaning to this word anthropomorphic because we do interpret it in more than just when we say draw things doing human things. We do a lot more than just that. In terms of anthropomorphic, we take it in the furry fandom to a much into furries and into tree creations similar to what we see in the style of furries. We take anthropomorphic a lot more deep than just a surface level. I'm going to ex show exactly what I mean. So when we take characters, so, okay, that's not working. Got to turn this off. When we draw a furry character, so this is like um, a pretty simple furry face that we come up with in terms of how um, the furry fandom interprets uh, animal-like characters. This is just a basic dog that I drew for the purpose of this panel. Um, and this is pretty simple, and it looks like what we would want to see. Now, 
on a surface level, it's just like, yeah, that's, that's a basic dog. I, I get that. But on a deeper level, there's a lot more to it. Now, when we draw humans, we also have a very similar kind of, we have a very unique way of drawing them. And over time and over the course of, well, human history, we've gotten a lot better at figuring out ourselves to the point where we're able to map our own facial structures and map certain uh, concentration points that can be used for, say, expression. Now, I mapped out these facial points in here where I basically labeled them down to a couple of anatomy points. So in this case, we have certain sections of the face that we basically know cause expression. So by manipulating some of these certain sections or boxes, we can create faces like disgust, uh, surprise, anger, rage, sadness. And it's how we um, basically by scrunching, folding, or um, moving them, stretching or scrunching these specific sections, we can actually create every single expression that we want to. And this is the basis that I use for when I'm drawing people. So say if I want a, um, a picture of disgust. So I'm going to go, oh, that's the wrong thing. I'm going to go up and I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna draw a face of disgust over on this side. So if I wanna draw a face of disgust, I can use this to basically reference off of it. So I'm going to start with a human facial structure right here. I'm going to use those points and I'm going to draw that. So if I'm gonna to wanna to draw a face of disgust, I know that um, basically the eyes are basically are going to squint a little bit. You're gonna have an upturned face, kind of like so. Ears go here, not really important to this kind of lesson. And we're gonna basically have the eyebrows furrowed, which means that this section right here is going to be folded more than normal. Same with uh, the nose is just going to be a little bit along with the cheeks. Nose is gonna be re recoiling a little bit. But more importantly, these sections down here are going to be folded up because your face, or this, um, the mouth, is basically going to be turned up in a upside down moon shape. And that's gonna cause this section right here to also fold and scrunch. And this section to stretch. So it's putting a lot of pressure up here. And we can basically scrunch and fold these sections to basically make the shape that we want. And so by manipulating a lot of these sections, we can basically create the face that we so desire. So in this case, and I'm going to basically outline some of these sections. So right here we have the purple, which is right down here, which is being scrunched. We have the red, which is right here, which is not being scrunched. We have the orange, which is below that. We have this just blue, blue off section that really isn't affected that much except for maybe a little bit right there. We have the cheeks that are smaller because they are being scrunched mostly by this green part that is basically taking up a majority and being squished by the, by the purple part right here, which is basically forcing its way up into the upper face. Now, the reason I bring this up is because on a surface level, we can create human expressions by basically mapping these points onto any drawing that we have and for any facial expression. So I'm gonna look up a picture of say rage. So let's look up a, a picture of somebody who is very angry. Uh, give me a second. So I'm going to bring this one in here. And if we take a look at this, we can basically map those same facial structures onto here. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. This is uh, getting to a point. Just give me a second. And we can map these facial structures. So let's take the let's take the green first because that's the most important section uh, as of right now. So we can basically map that. We can tell that that is basically this section right here. 
and it's being extremely scrunched up. We have the main red, like under of the cheeks right here. And then we have the blue, the side right here. We have the purple, just scrunching up this section of the face right here. We have this basically also being scrunched right here. And then we have the orange beneath that. And so we are able to take a lot of these sections and basically map them onto facial structures that we can see. Now, the reason this is so important is because of the word again, anthropomorphization. The anthropomorphization refers to us putting human characteristics onto animals. Now, the reason this is so important is because it's not just making animals be human beings. It's a much more deeper um, insight into that. And it's a much more deeper meaning than just making an anthropomorphic character do human things. It's making an anthropomorphic character do human expressions. It's making an anthropomorphic character um, be able to react in the same way that we would. And you cannot make an animal react with its animal facial structure. And for that reason, we can, and this is the cool part, I can't wait to and for this reason, we can take our human facial structure and map it onto a furry. We do, and this is a crucial section. And this is a, a, the most crucial point of the fandom's art style as a whole, is that when we create anthropomorphic characters, we don't actually take animal muscle structure that much. And that is included in the face because like you can have a, because the basic premise of like a furry in the sense is a human with a dog's head. No, 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 It is straight up a human and we just mutated the muscle in it. Now, the reason I say this is because when I'm drawing furries, I'm not drawing a, a like an animal. I am drawing a human that I morphed into some monstrosity that has the exact same facial structure and facial muscles just map slightly differently to be able to make the exact same expressions that a human is able to. And this is the most important thing that you can learn. And it's basically, I will, I will try to post these pictures somewhere after this stream or after this panel, but this, this is the premise. Anthropomorphic facial structure is just modified human facial structure. It is not anthro. It is not the animal musculature being put onto a human head. So what about three-fourths? Three-fourths will be important in the sense when I'm actually going to be trying to interpret some of the drawings that I'm going to be doing. Using this, so we can see that every single muscle or every single section on here is mapped onto the anthropomorphic character. We have the part above the brow, part above the brow, we have the section in between the brows, uh, exactly the same. The main difference between human facial structure and, and something like a furry is that you this section right here that belongs to say the nose area is a lot bigger. And that actually makes things more simplified because on a human face, a lot of your expression is in the mouth area and in the nose area. But by spreading it out, we almost make it easier to interpret. Now, the reason we're going to do this, I'm, and I'm going to basically show you the cool thing, is this isn't something that I just practice. This is something that everybody does. So we're going to basically take that premise, and we are going to be looking at, say, a character like, um, how about Nick Wilde? Nick Wilde is a good example. So let's drag him over here, uh, and we're going to lower the opacity on him, if I can do that. There we go. And we're basically going to map this exact same facial structure, as we see here, onto him. Now, if we look at, like, say, an actual fox, this is this is very clearly a fox, but it's an inter it's more of an interpretation of the style of a fox, and more of an interpretation of human anatomy. So, if we map the human anatomy that we have here, so let's let's do that. Let's actually map this to show that my theory or that my premise has some logic to it. Uh, let's start with basically uh, the nose. So we're going to start with this green band, and we can see that it's mapped right here. And this is a really good way to break down characters. And we can see that 
Oh, look, it's right there. Look, so it goes right across, jaw right across the mouth, right down there. Cool. Let's map the purple of the nose. Oh, look, it's right there. So we have this facial structure. Cool. It is right exactly where we would expect it to be. And this is a really good way to break down different anatomical structures. So we have this purple part around the eyes. Oh, yep, it's right there. Cool. Well, look at that. And we go back there. Oh, look. Look, there it is. Wow, cool. And we have it over here. It's a little bit different, but it's basically the same thing. So it's right there, right there. Would you look at that? It's all there. Oh, I got the brows up top. Got you. Let me look up here. And, well, wouldn't you know, the brows are right there. Go back. So right here. And the brows are also there as well, just as in our drawing and just in reference to human facial anatomy as well. We've got the temple area right around here, exactly the same. If you look at that, mapped pretty much exactly the same how I have it on my furry character right here, my furry reference. We can take the cheeks right here, and we can see that it's because it's fox, they're a bit smaller, but they are still present. They are still very present. So we got that right here. And we got it right here. We can take the same green, map it to the other side. You can see it's a little bit flatter because of the fox facial structure. And then here we have the bridge of said nose or the front of said nose, which would be this section on a human and this section on a furry. And then we have the bridge and upper brow right up here, the upper section and the lower section. I don't know any anatomy terms, which is why um, I'm trying to show rather than tell because I am terrible at vocabulary in explaining exactly what I'm doing. Then we have this large section down here. going into a chin. We have the nose, which is slightly different from a human nose, but it's just in the sense that we have this large structure right in front here. And then we have the backing blue, which is just right back here. This is a bit off, but we can basically use this basic structure and basic understanding of how characters are anthropomorphized to basically break down how to draw different creatures. Using this, we understand that most forms of media don't actually make animals and make them talk you make humans talk and look like animals. It's, it's a very interesting premise because it's not something that a lot of people realize and getting a deeper understanding of this will help you be able to draw expressions. So now, using what we've learned here and understanding that human facial structure is exactly the same as anthropomorphic facial structure, just modified, we are gonna take that same picture, we're gonna take the same picture of range and we are going to map it onto an anthropomorphic character. So let's find that same picture again, right here. So let's take this and now using our references, we are going to basically map it on an anthropomorphic character. And by using these references and by understanding that it is a human and we need to use human facial anatomy to basically break it down, we can understand exactly how to draw a plethora of different expressions. And even just understanding these sections of a human, we have a much better understanding of how we're going to tackle it. This helps me a lot in terms of just being able to draw different expressions and accentuate expressions to basically understand what sections of the body that I'm going to be manipulating, what part of sections are going to fold, which part of sections are not. It's really helpful.
So let's start with a circle and we're gonna start with a very basic anthropomorphic shape. So we're gonna start with a circle, we're gonna start with the eyes. And then we're gonna start with the nose and we're just gonna map it out like we would just regularly um, if we were drawing a variation in terms of construction lines. So we're gonna map the ears back. That's another important thing is animals, because they are animals, represent emotions in different ways. And a lot of anim animalistic emotion is represented in body language. So it is important to realize that animals do represent expressions just in different ways than humans do. And now knowing that we're gonna map the eyes, we're just going to kind of figure out where they go just so that we can figure it out. And now basically, now that we've got all of this mapped, we are basically going to start applying what we understand about human facial structure and how it applies here and how we're going to represent it in our anthropomorphic character. So what we know immediately is that we have this immediate scrunch up right here. So this scrunch up right here is going to match to a scrunch up right here, which is going to match up to a scrunch up right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to map that. So that's going to scrunch really hard. And that in fourth is going to cause this entire section right here to scrunch up, as we can see right here. So we're going to have like, that's where we're going to get that furrow of the nose that we see on animalistic on animals. And then we also get a scrunch up right here, which maps to this section of the human which maps to this section of an anthropomorphic character. So we're gonna focus on drawing the eyebrows next so that we can basically get some baselines for, and we notice that the eyes are a lot smaller, so we're going to basically do that. So they're very much creased. And then we're gonna draw the eyebrows pretty close to it. Another thing that helps is if you make the expression yourself, you look like an absolute weirdo when drawing, but it helps me. I think it's funny. Uh, and then so we have the brows creased right here and up here. So it needs a more angry expression. So I'm going to we notice that the bottom jaw, so this bottom section right here, there's going to be a bit of a crease right there. So we're going to basically try to think about the jawline. and just kind of reference that. But we're also gonna have it a very open wide mouth, like so. I'm just kind of thinking about how the anatomy will work. So we know that this section right here is really scrunched up. So that's going to basically create that scrunch like so. And since we have the teeth bared, that's gonna increase the size of the mouth and basically create that initial scrunch that we would see in animals as well. Rage is a very animalistic and very, um, not just something that humans feel, but something that all animals feel. So now we're going to draw the teeth in there, bare teeth, because that is what is created when you are very, very angry. We're going to draw brows even lower, because I really want to represent that well. And so we're basically breaking down this right here. So the cheeks are going to be a lot smaller. They're going to be farther out here. We're going to have that section basically come up and be completely scrunched and scrunch up really close to the face as well. And then we're going to have this section right down here that curves into the mouth, which isn't really going to play much of a role, but it's more like this area is more like a wall than anything else. And we're basically going to just section off areas based off of that. 
And we know that the cheeks are going to be higher up because there's just that large amount of scrunching in the face. We know that since the eyebrows are furled, this area right here is going to be very scrunched and we're going to have like the eyelids scrunch as well. And then we know that the chin gets a lot smaller in this state of just agony and rage versus when you are happy, say so. And then basically by breaking it down like this, using this reference to dissect the anatomy and expression here, using that to interpret into this. So basically we start with a basic figure and then we interpret into this. From there, we're gonna interpret into this. And then from there, we interpret it into our final drawing. Now, this creates a much cleaner expression than if we were to kind of like wing it, say. When we have a general understanding, we're able to better tell what we're drawing. Because no one draws from imagination, we all draw based off of references and realis realism. So by understanding what is real and morphing that into our imagination, we are able to get a better understanding and better interpret and better present what we are thinking. Because art is based off of reality and reality is based off of art. And by taking reality and morphing it into something that is some, into something we don't see is really what's magical about it. But we do need to understand what happens and how we interpret things because we interpret things from a human perspective and a human perspective is able to tell human emotions, not animal emotions. Which means when we draw anthropomorphic animals, we have to basically represent it in a very human way. And we get an expression that is very much of rage and aggression right here. So, and you can tell that this character is very angry. So we can tell that the brow is furrowed. So even this section right here, like up here, is also going down. So we're going to represent that like so. And then. Like that. Even there's a section right here that just really doesn't have anything going on because it's being pulled up. And then we have bare teeth. Probably want wider eyes because rage in its purest form has a lot more white space in the eyes. And this is just from learning from experience, less than actually looking at the picture because sometimes you do need to take artistic liberties. And that is a face of somebody who is properly angry. Now let's try something a little bit different. We've got a couple of minutes before um, we get the 50 minute mark. So let's actually try an expression of extreme elation. So. Let's go to, let's, let's say something is happy. So let's interpret happy. Happy mountain bike. Google knows me, daddy Google knows me. Uh, so let's take, um, ooh, this is a good picture. Let's take this one right here. So. We can see that we associate yellow with happy, yada, yada, yada. I can go into color theory all day, but that's not what I'm talking about. So let's take this and interpret this face. And then let's make this one. Let's verify it because I'm trash and that's what we're going to do. And that's what you're here to see. So let's take that and let's um, move this up a little bit just so I have a little bit more room to work with. Do that there. And so we're basically going to do the same thing where we take this face interpret it into here. From there, we're going to interpret it into here. And then from there, we're going to spit out a drawing that uses that same facial structure, but we're now anthropomorph anthropomorphizing. Okay. Um, I, so let's do that. So let's start with a circle, basic premise of, we're going to try to get the angle down. So the angle is very much front facing like so. And we're basically just going to draw out nose just so that we know where it is and kind of how to interpret it and the eyes and this is just me kind of 
what I know from how to interpret like just the three D structure of a anthropomorphic character real quick, and then from there we basically just draw kind of the rest using a quick reference of this to get a general understanding. And when you're happy, we know that an animal's ears are generally going to perk up. So we're going to have a very happy, very perky looking character. Uh, it's going to go like that. Well, we'll, we'll have him be a jackal. Why not? And then we're going to draw the temple here. So the temple doesn't really change. Again, um, this these two blue sections are more of walls of areas that you aren't going to mess with more than anything else. They're just kind of like reference points where you are not going to mess with anatomy as much and where the expression kind of ends. So now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of reference, let's say, let's say the eyebrows first. So we're going to reference the eyebrows, which are going to be a little bit higher up. Um, and they're very much going to be rounded and very relaxed or stretched. So this section right here is going to be stretched up and we're going to have wide eyes. Um, now, underneath that, we notice that there is a bit of crease, but that's more in the eyelid than anything else. So we're going to kind of reference that eyelid crease, um, but overall the character is very much happy. Now, when we take a look at the nose and the mouth, which is where we're going to go to next, is we're going to notice we're going to notice that the, um, the mouth is very stretched, but not in a way where it's creasing. It's very stretched in a way where this section right here is creasing, which is right here, which we can interpret as being like this. So if we take that nose and we basically stretch it, we're going to have that structure right here. We're going to have that crease right there. And that's in fourth is going to make the cheek decrease a little bit and scrunch up a little bit like that. So we're going to have a bit of a thinner cheek than normal. And that is going to be like so. And then we notice that this section is also going to be a little bit scrunched, but not in a sad, not in a bad way. It's going to be more of a happy way. So it is going to, it's not really going to scrunch the top as much as being in sheer rage, but it is going to scrunch it up a little bit. The main difference is right here. There is no scrunching of the brow because the eyebrows are up high. So this section is going to be relatively smooth. Now, when we interpret the rest of the face, we're going to notice that it is a large, just a downward smile. We notice that there is a bit of scrunching right here, most importantly, right around there, but it's not going to be as, um, as it's almost like a rage face, but not quite because there isn't as much scrunching. It's more of a stretch than anything else. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of draw that mouth shape. So notice that the character is very happy. So they are going to have a very, very wide mouth, almost exactly the same as previously. But this time, it's not going to have the same kind of muscles tensioned like before, because it's going to be a very solid and smooth transition. And we're basically going to have that same thing happen here. So we're going to kind of see a little bit of crease right there. But, and it's going to scrunch up a little bit, but overall, it's not going to scrunch up as much. Again, most of the change is in the face. So we're going to increase that a little bit. We're still going to have bare teeth because you still share, show your teeth when smiling. Some monkeys don't. Um, it's an act of aggression. So some animals do not bare teeth when smiling. Humans are one of the species that does. Um, most animals do not. So we're going to make this almost a wider smile. I'm not liking how, eh, that's fine. And then we notice that they're winking over here. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that. So we'll draw a winky face. But notice that the structure of the eyebrow is still the same. Yeah, increase the size of that mouth because I feel like it's a little bit too small. And then like so. And then we notice that there is a bit of scrunching right around there, but overall it's not that much. And it's mostly in the lips, which frankly, animals don't really have. So we won't really mess with that. And then, let's see, what else? That's basically it. So because of that scrunching right here in the cheeks, the cheeks are higher up, but it's mostly the brows and how they aren't really that, that angry, 
that we're able to interpret it a, a little bit better. And then we also notice that the smile just goes straight up instead of up and down like it would in someone in extreme rage. So using this, we can basically finish this off. And we now have a face evolution. And then the neck position. Boom. We have a very happy character. Now, obviously, we're not going to be this heavy with the actual, like, lining of the character. This is just mostly as referencing to kind of go off of. More than anything else. So we're going to kind of have... And I'm not going to be drawing all these sections all the time. Um, this is more just so that you can see where these same sections are on a human and on a uh, furry character. So this is a much more relaxed position up top, but still very stretched at the bottom, which is very indicative of a smile because a smile is very straining on your bottom muscles and on your brow and every other part of your body, but just in a very different way than rage is. So knowing that, uh, I'm going to open up the questions so if anybody has any questions or want me to draw a specific facial structure that they're having issues with, I will open it up now. I've got a couple of minutes left, so I can try to rush through a couple of examples. But um, so um, Atheos says, hi, Zillion. This is a less of a useful question and more of a curious one. But I was wondering if you are ever making expressions, if you ever try making expressions yourself to try to feel for what muscles are being stretched and contracted. Yes, I do. In fact, when I'm drawing certain expressions, I will make that expression. And if I'm drawing in public, that's very weird when I start making random things. Um, how can I translate this into protogens? How you can translate this into protogens is by taking those creases and making those light up lines on the mask. So say you have, and it's basically just simplifying this even more. So say we have a protogen face. Let me do that real quick. And I'm gonna make one of, say, um, concern. So we're going to do protogen right here. And then if we're going to map the face, we know that the brows are going to kind of crease down a little bit like that and like that. So that is going to be like the little brows that you see on a protogen like that. And then we know that the eyes are going to kind of curve down as well, maybe a little bit bigger because when you're concerned, your eyes do get a little bit larger. because your eyes do get wide when you are concerned. So we're going to kind of draw that. And then the face is very much kind of creasing down like, Ooh, like, Ooh, like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to interpret that into basically the same thing. And then because we have a little bit of a crease down here, going to kind of, and it's going to be mostly the back here, and we basically have a very simplified version of, say, a protein face. All right, so um, would 3D model bases be help for translating structures to paper? Yes, they would. Actually, um, physical 3D models are almost the, um, are almost the quintessential um, reason that you're able to draw because you're not supposed to be thinking in 2D, you're supposed to be thinking in 3D because you're taking a, you're making the illusion of a three-dimensional object in a 2D space. So absolutely three-dimensional objects are absolutely important. Could you draw an expression of fear or terror? Let's actually do that. That's a, that's a good one. So terror, and you'll notice that a lot of these expressions have subtle differences. And so that's kind of neat, but um, let's, uh, let's see if we can find one that is of, of terror real quick. See, sheer terror. Man, I can't really find a, a good expression of terror.
So let's do one of terror. Oh, this is a great one. All right, let's uh, let's interpret this. <laughs> let's interpret this one. This should be fun. I love doing ex like accentuated expressions, and this is going to be really cool. So we're going to take this, and we're basically going to draw the furry character real quick, just the circle, and we're going to draw the eyes, and like right there, and then we're going to draw the nose right there, and we're basically just going to kind of just get the expression down. And so now we're going to use the basis of Terror, we're going to do a little bit more of an anthropomorphize and cartoonish amount. So we're going to take what we have learned and basically accentuate it now to make the expression even more um, expressful than we could on, say, even a human. So knowing that, what we're going to do is we're now going to make the eyes even larger. We're going to make the eyebrows go up even higher. We're going to show like the face looking down. And we notice that there is a huge like it's 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 all being curved down to basically make up for the screaming amount. So there is a lot of stretch in the face itself. So meaning that when we interpret this in the character, it's almost going to be just like a almost straight shot down. So like that which means that the cheekbone is going to go really far like that. And there's so much stretch in the upper face to make up for just the amount of just tissue that needs to be made up for the screaming that you're going to inevitably be having. So knowing that, we're basically going to be curving down. And we're going to have a super wide mouth, almost to ridiculous proportions. And then we are going to have a bit of, we're going to have no scrunching on the face, no scrunching on the nose, no scrunching anywhere, because this character is just straight up terrified. And we notice that it's right below the eye line, so we're going to actually go a bit further back, like so. We'll notice that the mouth is almost open to a ridiculous amount when making this type of expression. I'm not very good at like terrifying expressions. It's still something I'm working on. I'll do my best here, but just know that this is not the perfect interpretation. I'm trying to kind of make it so, but it's not really working. And then we notice that there's a bit of a crease up here. So it almost curves down a little bit like that. And so we notice that the face is super stretched like so, and we're going to have the eyes like that. So we notice that the chin, like the um, cheeks are really stretched going down. So it's basically this huge section going down like that. Um, and there we go. Temples are right there. Temples are right there. And then we have, again, a lot of stretch down below. And that this section right here is basically going to... It's basically going to crease right here too, so we can actually increase the size of this by creasing this red section right here, which is this red section right here, which is actually going out like that. So we almost get something like that in the face of real fear and terror. Anyways, let's take this deer. Let's take a deer for an example. Is there any way to translate this information you gave to antler to antler position? Uh, my main question for that is: Do antlers move? Um, I I can't. I don't really know exactly. So look when you reference image stuff like ears and antlers, because they're so expressful in an animal animalistic way. You actually probably want to keep the more anatomical proportions of an animal than on a human. 
because in antlers, they can't really wiggle and they can't make expressions. So just look at where they are in reference to like the ears and the rest of the head on a deer, and that's going to basically be a replaced antlers. The, the antlers on a deer are generally just slightly in front of the ears and behind the face, but more behind the face than in front of the ears. Um, I feel like we need feline, rodent, avian, and deer, reptile, dragon examples. All right, let's do um, a let's do a let's do a disgust cat. Let's do a disgust. Um, so avians are a little bit more difficult because the beak doesn't really move that much, but we can basically interpret it from the beak itself. Uh, let's see. Um, deer example. Translate. What would you develop a baseline for mapping human facial structure? How do you develop? Basically by just studying and looking at it. And I will. So uh, Antheos is asking, like, how do I develop um, basis for human facial structure? Through references and, and uh, tutorials, basically. So anything from YouTube tutorials to just looking up and even just looking at your own face in the mirror. That's how you develop it. Um, this is basically three years of me developing human facial structures before I even thought of going into furries. Um, I feel like we need a feline, avian, or deer. Let's um, let's do a deer expression real quick uh, while we have time. I think I'm running a little bit over time now. I want to do one more version, like a rodent or avian. Deer or reptile. So reptile or dragon ones are pretty simple. It's basically the same thing. We're just because you are basically using your imagination to come up with a character. I want to do one based off of actual. So let's do a sad. Let's do a sad rodent. So images. Let's um. So we got a sad expression here. Let's take this. Let's do this here. And we are going to take that. We're going to map it onto a, let's say a, let's do a pine bar. Now you generally get the facial structure of a pine marten by, um, so the basic facial structure of a pine marten is like this, and it doesn't really map terribly well. It, it actually maps a lot better than a lot of other creatures, but that's just the general shape of a pine marten's face. So let's actually use both of these references to kind of map a sad pine marten. So we're gonna kind of use looking up. So he's kind of sad. It's a smaller, it's a smaller nose, so kind of like that. And then the ears are a lot bigger, so they're right here. And then the face kind of. It's the nose bridge kind of curves a little bit more, like so. So we're just going to get the basic shape, and then basically um, the snout maps up into the ears. So there isn't really going to be as much cheek definition as there would be on other creatures. And then we have relatively small uplifted eyes. And now that we have that basis down, that was really fast. Um, I have not drawn that fast in a very long time. We're basically going to start mapping that expression that we have of this person onto this pine marten. So we're going to actually start with the mouth. So we notice that. Um, there is a lot of definition right here. Again, it's very much um, taking a lot of the material and tissue and curving it down to scrunch up right around here and right around here. So those are our scrunch areas. So we're going to have like a scrunch area right here. And we're going to have a scrunch area right down here. Now, using that, we're going to basically map the mouth real quick. So... like so. And then we notice that there's a lot of tissue right up here. And then we're have, gonna have the nose right there. And we notice the eyes are super big, but super sad. So we're gonna have that scrunching happen right around here, but in a very different way. It's very much in the upper bridge. And this section right here, this bridge is actually pretty clear. So we're gonna do that. And we're gonna have some scrunching back here. So that's gonna create the brow to kind of go down a little bit. And we're basically gonna have the cheeks be a lot larger. So it's gonna be a much more round and square face, like just a much more stretched face. And then we're gonna have a lot of um, basically scrunching down at the bottom here. So I'm looking at this face versus this one. So we notice that there's a bit of round right here, which maps to this section, which maps to this section. So that's going to basically create an almost 
an effect like that. And we're basically gonna create that um, section right here, which is like a scrunching right there, which maps to the scrunching area right there. So we're actually going to focus on the front a little bit and just have it be a little bit large. And since we do have a little bit of a crease, that crease is going to translate over the jawline a little bit. And we're going to have it be a little bit smaller. It's a little bit more in front because he is sad. He's a very sad pine martin. And we're noticing that there's a little bit of tremble. And we're going to have the ears go down because he is sad. Like so. Um, not the greatest example, but you can really get the point. Um, will you make this a drawing? Drawings for colored facial areas available to download. I will try my best to upload them. Uh, after this is done, I will upload them in this tab, in basis of facial and anthropomorphization, and I will put it um, as the pin, I will have one of the mods pin it. And yeah, how do horns it near the brow translate? Well, depending, you have to think about are they on the muscles or not? And if they are on the muscles, then yes, they would translate. And you just move them to where they would need to be. Uh, most of the times, horns are attached to the skull, which means they are unmovable objects. Now, this obviously changes for dragons and such because those are more or less scales than horns um, that you're going to be translating onto certain areas. But it all comes down to interpretation. And this is just a very base guideline for how you could interpret it. Uh, after that, it's all really up to you. So a lot of it has to be how do you want to interpret the mores? Does the rule of morphing human body structure to furry apply to the whole body or just facial structure? Um, on the rest of the body, it does. Um, it's, it's honestly a bit of a slider. And that's one of the things that I've noticed about a lot of furry drawings is that you can have people who make very realistic butch um, human bodies with dog heads, but you can also have something that very much looks like an animal that can walk on two legs. Um, the one place where I don't see much variation is in the head and how it's kind of mapped. So how the head is mapped is very much like this pretty much all the time. Um, in terms of the rest of the body, people are a little bit more lenient because people don't pay as much attention to the rest of the body as we pay attention to the head because humans in themselves pay most of, most of our attention in terms of expressions to the head and not the rest of the body. If you have enough time, could you do an example of a deer or horse? Um, I am actually out of time because I have already run over my time limit in terms of what I can do for the stream. So sadly, I cannot, but I... You, I will put these files in the Ramcon chat, pin it, so that you guys can take a look at it and download it and do whatever you want with it. But as of this point, I cannot because we are out of time. I am sorry I wasn't able to answer all your questions. Uh, I This is, you can interpret this into deers and different, any different animal type, dragon, deer, anything. All anthropomorphic creatures have human facial anatomy at a very base and rudimentary level. And that's what I'm really trying to get here is that at a very rudimentary level, you will always be able to use this trick to get certain types of expressions. Always. And I mean that always. Granted, I am not the best at facial anatomy and this may or may not be the most accurate version of it. Um, I don't know. I'm not very good at it. Uh, this is my current interpretation of it. If you want to interpret it in different ways or do your own studying of human facial anatomy, then I would absolutely advise you to do that. But for now, this is the best I've got, and I will make sure that I can give this to you guys. And thank you to everybody who joined this panel. I hope you learned a lot because this is something that I think is very important, and I am definitely going to try to make a YouTube video on it. Um, I hope you guys all have a wonderful day, and to everybody who's at RamCon, I hope you guys all have a fantastic rest of the convention. And until that time, I will see you all later. Thank you all for joining, and I hope you have a wonderful day.